Jeannie Chung, a woman of independence, commitment, and inspiration. Up until today, she still stands tall against life, though having faced many obstacles along the way. But what exactly were these obstacles that she encountered? What exactly was that pivoting moment in her life that influenced and shaped her to become the person she is today? To answer these questions, let us wind back in time to the very first day that Jeannie set foot on this world. On 30th August 1962, Jeannie was born in a hospital situated on the Hong Kong Islands. She was the fifth and final child of the family. Growing up was described as difficult, confined and boring, as the family lived on very little income. Her parents worked really hard to support all five kids to ensure that they were sufficient with food. Her father worked by the docks managing arrivals and departures of boats, while her mother worked casually in construction. As such, Jeannie and her siblings had to rely on each other and become responsible for the duties in the household. The living conditions were small and scarce because much of the expenditure had been dedicated towards food. The unit had only two rooms, a living and dining room combined, a small kitchen and one bathroom. Thus, in an effort to save space as well as money, Jeannie and her siblings shared a bunk bed and as you can imagine, it would be uncomfortable not being able to have your own bed. Meanwhile in the streets, it was always busy and populated with people. Going around to places was un uncomfortable and unpleasant as she felt that she had no personal space. She would constantly brush against people and squeeze through gaps in the crowd whilst travelling about. On top of the excessive population in Hong Kong, the people were rude, the air was hazy and humid from all the pollution, and much of the natural beauty on the island had been lost due to the demand in constructing high-rise buildings. In terms of her education, she studied at a local primary and secondary school till U10, before moving straight into full-time work. The reason being was that so Jeannie could start financially supporting the family so that her parents could relax after many years of working hard to provide. During this time, she worked in different lines of work which include being an administrative assistant at an advertising company, a secretary for a Japanese company, and a negotiator at a life insurance business. It was not until 1992 that her life had come to a new chapter when she met her partner Kenneth Chung at a workplace and in 1993 decided to migrate to Sydney to start a new life. Upon landing in Sydney, her first impressions were that the air was cleaner and clearer, the living space was more spacious, meaning that she could comfortably walk around. The pace of life was much slower than Hong Kong, making the environment less stressful and more relaxing. The scenery was breathtaking as Sydney had maintained the natural landmarks, and the community too was friendlier and helpful. Much had already changed for Jeannie in terms of environment, and she was already starting to really enjoy it here. The newly wedded couple spent the next few months living at their relative's house while searching for new work and a suitable home. It was not long before they found jobs in a house in Quakers Hill. However, Jeannie and her husband soon became busier than ever before as they had to take more responsibility in ensuring that they were keeping up with the financial demands of living. As they finally started to settle down, they decided to have kids, so in 1995 they conceived their first child Jovian, and in 1998 their second child Viv. But just when they thought the storm had come, they were presented with more challenges now as they had to support an additional two people. Jeannie proceeded to quit her job to take care of the kids while Kenneth continued to prov provide for the family. Over the years, they lived comfortably until in 2004 when conflict arose which led to the end of Jeannie and Kenneth's marriage. After court settlement, their kids were left under Jeannie's custody and Kenneth left Sydney. With no real income and promising prospects, Jeannie decided to go to university to get a degree. After years of hard work and commitment, she managed to graduate in accounting and find a secure job at Amada Oceana. Simultaneously, while working a 9-to-5 job, Jeannie also found the time to take care of her kids independently, giving up her social life once again. Over the years, my sister and I have experienced a blessed life, but behind closed doors, our mother sacrificed everything to provide for us. We will always be indebted to have our resilient and strong mother for single-handedly raising us and ensuring that we have a life filled with happiness and joy.